OK, welcome to this video on how to program the Raspberry Pi in Ruby. And the reason for doing this really is that I've seen a lot of videos on programming in Python, but not so many on Ruby. And I really like Ruby. I, I find it quite a, a nice language to learn to program in. So let's, let's start with this then. So what we need to do is set up the Raspberry Pi. So I'm assuming that you have already installed Raspbian, which is a uh, distribution of GNU Linux. So what we now need to do is launch a terminal. So probably in this case it will be LXTerm and you should see something similar to this. So what we now need to do is to install the Ruby interpreter. So Ruby is an interpreted language rather than a, a compiled language such as C. So if we install it using the apt-get command, which is fairly common on uh, GNU Linux distributions, so we do sudo, oops, sudo apt get install ruby. Now you may be asked for your administrator password. So in this case, I have already installed uh, ruby in the past, so that was fairly quick. Installing it should take uh, maybe a minute or so, depending on the, the speed of your SD card. So we can check that this is installed by typing ruby minus V and that will give you the version so you might have you know an older version it might be 1.8 or it could be all the way up to 2.2 but it shouldn't matter for this tutorial so let's create a, a projects folder so if we type make directory uh, projects and then CD to that so now you will need an editor so you can use anything you want really um, you could use gedit you could use Kate, you could use Genie, you could use a command line one such as VI or um, Emacs or Nano, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the, the main thing is that you're creating a text file and it has the extension .rb for Ruby. So let's create a, a hello world example. So if I do nano minus w uh, hello.rb but as I say, you could do this using a graphical editor. So the the thing really to start with is variables. So a variable uh, in Ruby is what is called dynamically typed. So you don't really have to say what kind of type it is. And by type, I mean it could be an integer, it could be a floating point number or a, a string. So I could say A equals two, B equals four, C equals A plus B, which would be six. And I could say message equals, oops, hello world. So that's all well and good, but we need to print these to the screen. So Ruby has a function called put string, which is put S. So what this does is it takes in a string. So for this case, let's just pass it message and save this. So we type Ruby, the name of the file, and there you go. So that's our first program. But that's not terribly interesting. So let's print something else, puts. Now, what we can do is pass it the C variable. So this will print hello world and a six, which is what we expected. But how can we add a bit more to that? So what we want to do is to be able to print a plus b equals c. So we can say a plus b equals c. So that's a string. But what will that print? Will that print two plus four equals six? No, it prints out literally the string that you've given it. So how do we get it to print out the variables? So the way we do this in Ruby is we use a hash. Oops, wrong one. It helps if I look at the keyboard. So we can say using a hash and the curly brackets, a plus b equals C. Okay, 
So what this is doing is taking the variables and putting those into the string. So really the, the, the hash and the curly brackets just means the value of, and it turns it into a string. So if we print that, 2 plus 4 equals 6. Okay, so let's do something a bit more exciting. So let's go back to this program and let's delete these. So in this case, we have numbers which are called scalar values. It's just one thing. Um, but in this next bit, I will talk about arrays, or sometimes they're called lists or vectors. They're quite similar concepts. What if we wanted to do an average? So if we say c equals 3. If we wanted to get an average, then we can say um, total equals a plus b plus c. And then we can say the average, so the mean equals total divided by 3. And we want to print the average. So what will that be? Probably around 3. 3. Okay. But this isn't great because you don't know how many numbers you have. So how do we deal with this in a better way? What if you had a hundred numbers? You don't really want a hundred variables. So the way that we get around this, if I delete that, is using what is called an array. So let's create one. So we can say, we'll call it my numbers equals array dot new. Now, this is, a, this is new uh, from what we've seen so far. Array is what is called a class. Now, I won't cover it in this video. This is something for object-oriented programming, but really this is saying there is a class called array and it has a function called new. In object orientation they call it methods, but don't worry about that too much. So we have this my numbers array. So an array lets you store a list of, of variables. So let's say my my numbers 0 equals 2, my, my numbers, oops, spelt it wrong, 1 equals 4, my numbers, 2 equals 3. Now the, the thing that's important is the first value in an array is 0. Think of the number as being an offset, which is the start has an offset of zero. This is just a, a, a legacy thing, and this is has really come from languages like C, um, where you have things like pointers and, and whatnot, but we don't need to worry about that too much here. The key thing is the first element of an array is zero, not one. So if we want to print one of these numbers, let's say we want to print uh, the second number, so index 1, my numbers 1. Let's print that 4. Okay, so that's what we expect. So how do we create an average? Um, we saw previously that you could write some code to do this, but this is not that efficient because if you want to do it again and again and again, you don't want to keep copying and pasting. So, as you can see here, this puts is what we call a function. So let's create a function. So this is some code that we can reuse. So let's add it a little bit higher. We could type def, for, so defining a function, and we'll call it average. And into that function, we pass a parameter, and we call it numbers. So we do an end. So some languages use uh, curly brackets like C and Java. Uh, Ruby uses things like define and end. But this is really just saying you're defining a function called average. It has a parameter, a single parameter called numbers. 
So what we can do here is say total equals zero to start with. Now we have to introduce the idea of what we call a loop. So what this will do is go through every item in that list or in the array and do something. So Ruby's quite nice. Uh, you can do different things in different languages. In something like C, you would create what's called a for loop, so you would step through the list. Uh, Ruby's quite nice because you have the idea that variables are objects which can have methods. So we can say numbers.each do and then we have a variable that comes out of that so we'll call it next number end so this might look a little bit odd to uh, C programmers or Java programmers but essentially it's it's an iterator so what this is saying is we create a loop and we go through every number in that in that array or every variable in the array and we call it next number so if we were to print oh, puts next next number this would just go uh, what do we call these now two four and three it would print two then four and three so what we can do here is we can say total equals total plus next next number so we're adding this together but we can do something else there instead of saying total is total plus you can say plus equals so that means take the value in total and add something to it okay that's fine so for the average we need to know what is the total and what is the number of numbers that we want to average so we can do that so we can say actually don't want to call it the same thing uh, my average I don't want to call it the same name as the uh, as the function uh, we can say uh, total divided by three well that's fine but we don't know how long this array is so what we can say is numbers count. Okay, so we we can call the count function, and I think to be correct for each, really that is a function. So we can put that there. So we're saying my average is this total that we have calculated, and we are dividing it by the number or the 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 length of that array. Okay, so that's all well and good. So we have now created the function. And we have another thing as well. We can write what we call comments. So we create hash there and say this function calculates the average. Okay, so what, what comments do is, this is things for the programmer to, to write notes in the program, uh, so you can write down what you've done. Uh, so we can write here, oops, uh, loop over the array and calculate the total. Okay, so does that make sense? We have an average and we've calculated it. So what we need to do is to return that value back to uh, the, the function or the, the code that has called this function. So we do return my average. Okay, so we now need to call that. We can put a comment here and say start of program. So this is where the program starts. We define the numbers and then we say my average which is not the same as that average so we have um, scope so don't worry about that too much uh, 
or we could call it the average, for example, it doesn't matter too much, uh, equals, we're calling the average function, and we're passing it my numbers, my, my numbers. So we print it, and we say b, oops, the average. So that's it. So let's see what this does. Three. So we can say here my numbers three equals ten. So we can keep adding to this. Uh, one thing we can also do is uh, add uh, numbers. We don't have to keep giving it the index. We can say to this array just put another number at the end so we can do what we call push okay so let's push these two yeah so we've got four numbers and we've pushed the last two on we could do that for all of them four okay so let's just let's do this for all of them so you can see functions are really useful. Uh, and the reason that we know that we can use push is because this array class defines these functions. So what we're saying is we're creating a new instance of an array and it defines these, these methods that we can call or methods functions. Uh, don't worry about it too much at this point. They are slightly different, but that's more to do with object orientation. And we can say my numbers dot push, uh, I don't know, five. So we can uh, calculate the average. Okay, so I've just scrolled down. So if that's clear, so we create the array, we add these, or rather push these numbers onto it, we calculate the average variable by calling the average function which we have created above and we pass it my numbers and then we pass that the average variable to the put string method which prints the numbers or rather prints the the variable it only prints one number because we only have one average so the average function is as you see there we start the total at zero we iterate over every item in this array and every time we call the value next number, we add it to the total. The average is calculated by the total divided by the number of numbers in that array, if that makes sense, or the length of the array. And then we return the my average, which comes back from here. Okay, so nothing too complex, but there are quite a few uh, concepts that have been introduced here. So let's run that. Yeah, so I think I'll leave it there. So this is, you know, a fairly short video, really just to introduce Ruby. Uh, it's quite popular from Ruby on Rails, but for a, a you know a simple programming language, well, I say simple, it's it's powerful, but uh, a simple to learn language. It's really good to uh, to learn how to program with. So hopefully this has been of some use. Uh, I'll think about doing some some more videos soon and you know, introducing some more advanced concepts, but there's plenty to play around with here, so thanks very much for watching.